Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nanalisa Dawn. I remain your host, or I am your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. Though, honestly, I'm starting to just prefer Dominic at this point. And we are back. I know I've been gone for a little while because I've been sick. So, we're back! And we have a match between Anestos and Leopard Hunter. Two players I haven't really seen much of, although I've noticed Anestos has been playing a lot of matchmaking, so I'm curious to see how they've been doing. This is, I believe, a bit of an older game of theirs from a few days ago. They have been playing a lot. So I'm really curious to see how they're going to pan out over the course of the next few months, just if they keep going at it and keep practicing. Starting with the Amphibot Factor, and this is on Aurelion, of course, a water map, which kind of buys stored ships in as far as people tend to think, but then Amphibots do have a lot of ways of dealing damage without really being countered because they're all underwater. So at any rate, Leopard Hunter going in with a Cutter, which will have a bit of a hard time against these Ducks because, of course, Ducks have the underwater torpedoes, and Leopard Hunter... Moving back, I was about to expect they were going to just hang out on this ridge. Because the thing about this ridge is that it, I believe it's high enough that the ducks are forced above water. Which would, of course, mean that... Yeah, they are. So that would, of course, mean that the cutters can actually fight them on even footing. But I'm not sure if Leopard Hunter is totally aware of that. They will, however, be able to take advantage of that just because of the timing of this attack. Of course, the duck, however, is managing to get underwater. And at that point, Leopard Hunter knows full well, get away! Do not engage. The ducks will kill you. So with that, Leopard Hunter forced to shift over to Sea Wolves, which is pretty much what you gotta do. Sea Wolves or Hunters. Those will work well enough against Amps. Anestos, on the other hand, sticking to ducks. No, quite sticking to ducks, actually. Going to Archers, which I'm very curious about. I Archers are not great in pure water mass because they're forced to service to attack. So units like Cutters can totally deal with them. Most of the Sea Factory can deal with them. It's a little bit tricky that way, whereas, you know, ducks and boy, oh, well, ducks and not boys. What's the other one that? Oh, scallops. Scallops are the best choice down here. Well, it does appear the archer has managed to do its job, but yeah, ducks and scallops do really well underwater because they just fire from underwater. It's no big deal. Whereas just about everything else in the Amphibot factory is forced to surface to fire, which... I mean, that's more balanced, of course, it's fairer for the opponent, but it is a little bit harder to work with as far as the player who's using them. I also point out that Leopard Hunter already expanding to the Northern exp northern Metal Extractors, the plus three Metal Extractor over here, which, not the case for Anestos, but Anestos has just been taking more Metal Extractors, so they are a bit ahead economically. They definitely had in terms of power, they have much more robust energy infrastructure than Anestos, sorry, than Leopard Hunter, but... That's only for now. Leopard Hunter is working on a Geo Plant, and that will be done in time to be able to be used with this metal. They're not going to excess metal at all. The problem, of course, is that they're just not getting as much metal. And Nesto's currently doing what they can to stop some of the power generation as well. Looks like they are likely going for the metal extractor, but the wind, the tidal generators are blocking it, so there's only so much that can be done. Still getting rid of a few tidal generators isn't bad, but Leopard Hunter has now managed to get that geothermal plant online. So, it's not even going to matter. The main thing, of course, is getting rid of the metal extractors, but honestly, Anestos is doing fine as far as competitive economy goes. Their main issue right now is going to be actually getting all this metal into the factory. No caretakers, and the commander's over here not assisting. So, Anestos is going to be accessing basically now. Leopard Hunter, on the other hand, they are just building across the map. They haven't really started using anything to assist their factory, but they also don't have enough metal to worry about it. And, they, and they're and they just building defenses all around the map. They're building units all around... Well, building metal extractors all around the map. And actually doing a fine job just dominating this entire terrain. Leopard Hunter will be able to get rid of everything over to the south here. Anestos... Well, looks like they're going straight for this. I was going to think if they went over here with those ducks, they'd be able to at least stem the tide. But unfortunately, that is not happening. There is... There's there's these ducks out of position. They're not really going to be able to do much. Leopard Hunter, they are stopping. It's the one thing that's giving Anestos a chance here. But Anestos, again, is accessing metal. They are managing to get some scallops out, but I really wish they'd send in like one of these... Con or, no conches around here. Okay, never mind. How many conches do they have? The one! They have just the one conch. All right, so Anestos, use your commander at least, or get a strider hub... I gotta check in Nessus' history. I feel like they're a team player. If they're going for a Strider Hub like that, that is a... That's a team move. It's like five minutes into the game. I can see that in a 3v3, but not in a 1v1. I mean, to be fair, 
it would be a really strong caretaker. It's just three, four times the cost. Like, two caretakers is going to be far more efficient than one Strider Hub for the cost. And, of course, you're going to be able to actually get that metal use... Well, admittedly, the commander is using that metal in order to build the Strider Hub, so I suppose it's not all bad. I just can't see the Strider Hub being used productively for anything other than as a really expensive caretaker. That's about it. There just isn't the metal to be able to build something from the Strider Hub. That's, you know, three, 4,000 metal minimum. What are you going to build here? I guess... Shogun... Shogun or Reef? I mean, one of these three, but that's still 3,000 minimum. That's still going to be with the current... That's still going to be, like, two minutes to build that. And they're currently under siege. So I don't see how Anessos is going to be able to actually have two minutes to spare building nothing but whatever they're building out of the Strider Hub. So I guess the Strider Hub must... It, the only sensible thing to use it for is a caretaker. Use it to assist the factory, and that's going to be it. Leopard Hunter, on the other hand, has managed to get a much more robust economy and starting to get caretakers in their main base. They're much more robust economy, much more robust production. Everything is really turning out well for them. They're doing a fine job setting this up. I don't agree with the fusion reactor being built where it is. This is a massive risk. If that fusion reactor gets killed, then their entire base is gone. Though I don't think Leopard Hunter is too worried about that. I think they figure Anestos is building a reef. Okay, sure. That's... That was even longer than two minutes just because of what exactly... Oh, right, because it's just the Strider Hub. If the commander were to assist that, then it would go up to two minutes. Uh, at least be viable. I'm not sure if Anestos is aware of build assist. I'm genuinely not certain. Oh, they, they must be okay. Going to the caretaker. All right. I mean, that's that'll work. They certainly have the metal for it. They're not going to be... They're, they're accessing. They have been accessing. Still about 500 in storage, so it's not like they're in a terrible position. They are, however, in a terrible position to expand this one conch here. The one conch, I should point... No, no, it's in... Oh, they built more conches, thank goodness. Because this one's conch is going to die. Like, this conch is done. Or is it... No, it's not! It's It's gone to the island. All right. I mean, Leopard Hunter is completely aware of Anessos' expansions, but hey, at least it's done. And at the same time, Anestos, are you going to be able to get rid of this Mariner? Because that Mariner is the one thing that, if it dies... There you go. Expansions have been a little stopped or slowed a little bit at the front. There are still two other Mariners, one of which is over in the northeast with nothing stopping it. But hey, at least that forward expansion has been delayed somewhat, which is exactly what you want. I always say, you know, go for the constructors. That is going to slow down your opponent's expansions a lot more than anything else. Going to prevent the rebuilding. So, I agree with that, and Essos made a good move there. I still don't agree with the Reef, especially as it has now been spotted. Leopard Hunter sees exactly what's going on. They're going, oh, hey, look, it's a Reef. I guess I have all the time in the world then to just do whatever I want because it's going to take another minute to be done. And the Seawolves just go, you know what? Screw it. Kill everything. And I can't say I blame them. Yeah, I mean, the Commander can't really do much. That's All he really can do is build that Urchin. Bit of a shame there. There's a lot of vulnerable everything over here. Though I will give Anessos credit, they did rebuild the Southwest expansion after it got destroyed. That is something you don't see a lot of players do. It's, I've always said that's the thing that separates good players from great players, is whether or not you rebuild your expansions, and Anessos is rebuilding them, so good on you for rebuilding. However, it may not be enough. Leopard Hunter is currently entirely in control of their Wing of the Butterfly, as well as the Antennae, which is... Well, it's a 10 metal per second advantage, and 10 metal per second advantage is basically all you need, especially when you consider that Anestos has been losing units, and they've lost twice as many units metal-wise as Leopard Hunter, and now Leopard Hunter is just going for, you know, Envoys, Sirens, the higher-end ships. And the Reef is not even complete yet, with the Sea Wolves coming in to deal with it, the Reef, I don't honestly know if it has any anti-sub tools, I don't think it does. And Anesto certainly, their commander doesn't. That's the major problem. I'm really surprised we haven't seen anything to deal with that. But no, Anesto's commander goes down, takes out a couple Seawolves in his death explosion. But that's about it. At the same time, the Reef is setting itself up. But again, the Reef does not have anti-sub... Really, doesn't have anti-sub tools. Nope. It has a disarm missile and it has a bunch of helicopters. Which admittedly, I haven't seen a Reef in a game in forever. Or ever, I don't think, actually. I, have I ever seen a Reef in this game? I don't feel like I've ever seen a reef. So that's pretty cool.
But at the same time, that's also probably the last move that this player is going to make in this game because... I mean, they have a couple scallops, and those are good for defense. But, it's like, the Siren's coming in here. Should be able to take out these drones, no problem. If the Sonic just... Sonic can just one-shots them. Oof. Yeah, and the time it takes to rebuild new ones is just not going to make that work. These Sirens are basically the best counter to it. Leopard Hunter clearly knows what they're doing when it comes to figuring out how to deal with what Anestos is trying to throw at them. But, that is still... Anestos' territory is still theirs. I mean, they still have 30 metal per, 38 metal per second. It's kind of tough, since you know they spent it all on this one reef. But hey, with the production resuming over the Ampbot plant, and the fact that Anestos is the type of player to rebuild, I could see this still continuing for a little while. However, Leopard Hunter has so much more in military hardware, it's not likely that Anestos is going to be able to get back at this. Honestly, if they built a couple more caretakers, I could see them maybe managing to rebuild an army that would allow them to actually deal with Anestos. But they don't. They are accessing metal once again. They're burning all this reclaim into excess. Which is a real shame, because with the Strider Hub, that's 15 metal per second, like 25 metal per second into the factory. You just easily... I mean, 35 metal per second with a caretaker. That would easily burn all this excess, and then allow you to reclaim a bunch. And you have to go back and forth between reclaiming and attacking, but hey, that's still something. Still not accessing the metal. But yeah, if there's one thing that's going to cost Anestos this game, it is going to be... Well, other than going for a reef at the 5 minute mark, it's going... Which admittedly, actually, has worked out reasonably well, all things considered. But it's going to be the fact that they've been accessing. That's the key problem, and the Strider Hub is not being used to assist build, which is unfortunate because it would be able to do a lot of good to actually deal with Anestos, but nope. Oh, that disarm missile would have been perfect if it would have been done like five seconds earlier. Oof. Oh, that is unfortunate because now the drones can deal with it, but there's no drones left. So, yes, that's a, that's a bit of a shame. And thus endeth the reef, beaching itself on the ridge in the middle of the butterfly, and Anestos throws in the towel as their only real asset has been completely wiped out. So that's that's a first. I haven't I can't say I've ever seen a strider being used early in a 1v1 game, and honestly, that wasn't too terrible. The problem I think was Le Leopard Hunter just had more metal, and more importantly, Anestos accessed their metal. Look at metal production, it was actually relatively close, and army value was, I mean, entirely the reef, but if Anestos had turned all of that extra metal with the Strider Hub into just more metal there on top of the reclaim, they actually, they had a small chance. It would have been tricky because sirens are difficult to deal with, but it would have at least worked. I mean, if there's enough units to overwhelm the sirens, their sonic cannons don't have a high fire rate, so you can just overwhelm them with a bunch of ducks or a bunch of scallops on top of the drones from the reef especially firing up the disarm missile. You know, with proper use of that reef, I could see this this whole fleet of... of ah, my brain's just gone. Whole fleet of sirens being just turned into scrap, but it didn't happen. We saw the disarm missile being used, but at the wrong timing for the drones, and we didn't see anything being built up here. It was just a lot of excess metal. But, I mean, Anastos reclaimed, they rebuilt, they did a lot of... they did a lot of the things correctly. The one thing they didn't do is assist build allowing them to avoid accessing. Had they used the commander to assist, they wouldn't have had the excess. Had they used the strider up to assist, they wouldn't have had the excess. So yeah, that was the one thing that really went wrong in this game for them. I mean, also, building reefs questionable, but... the main thing was economic. Anyway, the next game is going to be one that... features... who's the people next? Oh, Kshatriya and Raid on Thornford. So that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.